Biker TV is brought to you by the Western Canadian Championship of Bike Building, Victory Motorcycles, Hoxotic Custom Cycles. Welcome to Biker TV, by bikers, for bikers. Now let's get this show on the road. Well, we're here in Grand Bend Motorplex in Grand Bend, Ontario on Father's Day, and we're uh, campaigning the P-Rod Destroyers for the first time in the East here, and we have Bill Gable from the CMDRA, who's been uh, teching us along as we go. So what do you think so far, Bill? I think it's, it's going really well. I'd like to see more bikes here, of course, uh, as always, but uh, there's a great turnout of street bikes for this event anyway, and a lot of people here today. Four guys that are racing, uh, some of them it's their first time and you wouldn't know it to look at them. They're, they're all being really professional, doing a good job. Uh, just issued uh, competition licenses to all four of them. Um, everything's running really smooth, just like clockwork. We're a little concerned about some of the weather maybe coming in here, so we're going to hurry up the eliminations. Uh, there's only two rounds and uh, she's going to be the first winner of the first East Coast Destroyer race. Yeah, baby, let's go racing. <laughs> Makes a mortal man want to uh, put a hoop on his neck. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bet. <laughs> the first Eastern date of the Destroyer Series, and we're here with Martin Dubay, the second place finisher, and had a great day at the track here in Grand Bend. Uh, any comments from some of the team members on their experience today? That was a great day, so which the air is a little, uh, little low in, in oxygen, but uh, this track is really, really good, it's soft, and we really appreciate that, and nice work to the CMD area. We have some fun, it's awesome to, to drive that bike. It's awesome, and this guy, second place, me third. We, we do what we gotta do, this work. We're very happy to see the guys come here from Quebec, and uh, don't worry, we're going over to San Air, and uh, they'll be there, and it'll be uh, another round. If we can get the, the plaque for Mr. Dubé. Felicitations. And a great representation from uh, Mike Duncan, who was the Rockies 
Harley Davidson representative, number one qualifier, and the first place finisher at this first Eastern date. Uh, first, I want to have a few comments from uh, from Dino from Rockies, just on the whole experience uh, this weekend. Oh, this has uh, been just awesome. These uh, destroyers are a lot of fun to work with and play with, and then just going out there winning was just awesome. But it was all our pilot who did everything. I, all I did was tune it. He has to drive it. <laughs> I got the easy part. Well, I think that uh, Mike made it look easy. Mike, how was it? Well, I think most of the credit should go to my pit crew. Uh, they made a hell of a bike today. Uh, we smoked some rubber and turned some good lights. But uh, if it wasn't for setup, we wouldn't be standing here. And So I got to credit all my teammates, Dave and Dino as the crew chief, and Sean and Paul, and uh, all the people at Rockies for letting us come out here. And we have all the fun while they're at work, right? <laughs> We can just get the presentation to our winner for the first Eastern Destroyer date, Mike Duncan. It feels pretty good. Uh, gotta say, we were kind of in the dark uh, a little bit today with the track conditions, but. Uh, the team really put a nice bike together for the conditions, and uh, we, we turned a good light. I think the light's what really saved us. Uh, I think we're going to need a quicker bike in the upcoming season because everyone's doing their homework. But everyone raced well, so my hat's off to the guys in Quebec and, and Davies. So hopefully they'll have some more destroyers out for our next race. You have to keep in mind that I really build custom Harleys for a living, but this which is a fun exercise. I'm just a fan of all motorcycles. And this one, well, it's sort of a combination of things. It started out with a in-the-crate CR250 dirt bike, probably the most successful dirt bike ever built. I cut the frame right down the middle, widened the frame by three quarters of an inch, widened the swing arm by one and a quarter inches. The neck is lowered down by almost a foot from where it was. The neck was cut off, the bottom frame rails, or the down tube bottom frame rails cut off. And we grafted in a, an engine that's currently used in supercart racing. The engine is actually manufactured in Calgary, so it has that Canadian content. And it's the Rotax Aprilia design. It's called a tandem twin. It's a two-cylinder engine, uh, 250 cc, two cylinders, like one in front of the other, two crankshafts geared together. It's a very different configuration. It runs an Aprilia cartridge style, six-speed gearbox and clutch assembly. It's a very high revving little engine. This thing makes almost no power below 9,000 RPM. And peak horsepower is around 13,000 RPM with another 1,000 RPM over rev. So the thing is just screaming. Um, very, very different configuration now. We dealt with uh, building expansion chambers and uh, just uh, building subframes and reworking the suspension. It was just a fun exercise all around, taking an existing dirt bike and transforming it into a land speed racer. Uh, took two KTM dirt bike radiators, cut the bracketry off and curved them. Curved them outwards and then back. Gives the bike a very small frontal area. And, uh, keeps it out of the wind, but also gives it a unique look to it. Builds a curved triangular down tube um, right above the, the front pipe where it comes out. So it just it's um, it's certainly not what we're used to in the custom bike world, but it certainly is customizing, but in a different way, using um, a data acquisition system, a computer, to, and download all information. You're using exhaust gas temperatures and water temperature to actually tune the engine. Yeah. You get feedback, and you make jetting changes accordingly to oh. get the maximum horsepower out of it. How many hours did this take? Well, <laughs> that's a hard one to answer because... I put a lot of effort into it beforehand. Um, a lot of the engineering, a lot of the smaller parts were built, sourcing out electric water pumps and controllers and computers, and I uh, even did a uh, dry run on the radiators. But this bike was built in a 10-day period, but this wasn't really so much a competition between Matt and myself in my eyes anyways. I always saw the build-offs as more of a showcase of two people's work and how you present yourself and such. Um, the competition element um, it usually has more to do with geography than anything else, uh, where the judging is taking place. 
But this added an extra element with actually racing the bikes was a nice change. And that's really what swayed me to do this, was the fact that we were actually going to race these things in the end. And where'd you race them? We raced our bikes at the Bonneville Salt Flats, which is a, just an amazing racing surface. There's so much history there. I kind of suspected there'd be this dedicated group of people that go back year after year, and, and there was. Uh, we were so well received right out of the, you know, right out of the trailer. They um, they came over, checked out, saw what we built, and um, I I kind of suspected that, you know, they'd have these notions as soon as they saw the TV crews that we were just, um, you know, a bunch of rock stars or whatever else. But um, they did accept us, and they saw we were putting a real race effort into it. So it was just a neat experience all around. I talked to people that have been going there for 40 years. You know. Um, just a neat bunch of people dedicated to their sport, just true enthusiasts. The name is right across the tank, Experimental, capital E, capital M. Um, it actually came from the first Harley I ever built, I called it the same thing, and it was very, it was a turbocharged shovel head, and it was just a big learning curve for me, and it actually comes from, an, it's an aircraft thing, when you reclassify or modify an airplane, you have to have that stenciled across or just on the side of the plane, so it was just fitting to this kind of bike which is definitely experimental. It's a combination of dirt bike parts, sport bike parts, snowmobile, and supercar parts. That's and, impressive. Uh, but it, the neat part for me was this exercise, yes, it's a custom bike. It has to have that visual element to it, but it also had to be a functional race bike, um, sort of without compromising on either one, if there is such a thing. Closed captioning by task performance. Where do you, all your other bikes and everything, where do you come up with the names for them? Like Trouble? Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't really like to give bikes names, but I almost needed to at one point, yeah. just so when I'm making notes to myself, I would know what I'm referring to when you have so many projects in the works. So, um, BTR3 has a story. It was originally going to be a collaboration with three other bike builders. This was the first one that won in Vegas, right? It is the first one that won at the RC Bar and it also won the World Championship, okay. the inaugural event. And um, then this one took this year, or this past year? This bike called Trouble won in 05, both events, um, which was phenomenal for me. I didn't really go into it expecting to win. To me, it was just important to um, have a good showing. You don't want to be known as a one-hit wonder. So I built a bike that I thought would be worthy of backing up that one. but. Um, you know, it, it happened to win. It's just great to get that acknowledgement from your fellow bike builders being peer judged events. But I gotta admit, they, they actually know what they're looking at. Yeah. Um, they don't really go for the, you know, the bling, the visual things. Um, it's, so it's a, it's a different result. Um, other events, is uh, public judge, you know, probably be wider tires and flashier paint jobs. So um, they both have their place, but it's almost like these shows are almost tailor-made for someone like myself. To me, it's more rewarding. Uh, I've always, um, I, I do respect the public's opinion on things, and, but to me, it, it's, I build the bike that I want to build, and to get that acknowledgement from people that I have respect for mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, very rewarding. Back to the name on this thing, the name Trouble, it actually was quite simple. Um, to me, you ask a lot of people out there, if you were to bolt a turbocharger or a supercharger on anything, let alone one with a missing cylinder, you were asking for trouble. That's where it came from. Um, it wasn't meant to be like an attitude thing, like, you know, give you trouble, whatever else. It was just sort of a, a simple one word thing that you could take it whichever way you want. But doing combinations like this, trying them is fun, but it's also kind of risky in a, in a sense. Uh, you don't really know until the last minute if it's going to work and how well it's going to work and there's no going back. The frame is purpose built for this engine and if it didn't work you can't just put a V-twin back in it so you scrap the whole project, you take a big hole in the backyard. Um, it's sort of a, a fun bike, there's more to it. Um, it's sort of an exercise in minimalism, it's sort of what you don't see that makes it unique. There's oil lines, well, the whole tank is divided into, sorry, the whole frame 
is divided into two oil tanks. There's oil lines inside the frame to route electrical, oil venting, return, hydraulics. Uh, lots of weird little subtle things that are, it's fun to build, time consuming but fun. Now as far as the paint on your bikes go, everything's, it's kind of refreshing actually, everything's really simplistic and not chromed out as far as the bike goes, why is that? I don't like to distract from the natural lines, which are very important to me, of a bike. So simple um, is better in this case. Um, in fact, it's not even a very pleasing color, but it seems to work with this bike. If I was to show a customer uh, this color sample, um, I doubt I could sway <laughs> anybody into going for it. But, you know, it everybody good, seems though. to like it. It seems to work, maybe not this light, but it seems to work with this bike. Sort of a, well, it's quite simple. It's the same color as my tubing roller over there. It's just a simple industrial green, but it seems to work. What makes you want to do this? To build to build bikes? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I started at a very early age. I was just a, I have a wonderful family, a very creative family. My dad's an architect. Um, I went to a, a, a wonderful private school, the Walter School, which really encourages um, individualism and creativeness. And um, it's just sort of in the blood, mechanical things. I grew up mm -hmm. working on my dad's Jaguar and his airplanes and whatnot. So I was around it. And um, it just sort of went from bicycles to dirt bikes to street bikes and, and cars but I figured I had more room in my you know I could fit more motorcycles in my garage than cars so I sort of stuck with the bikes that to me is the biggest challenge of a bike builder is to consistently come up with innovative designs many bike builders they stay in their comfort zone they build almost the same bike over and over again just with a different paint Following job the trend. Following the trend or following their trend, yeah, mm -hmm. they come up with a formula that they know works and they stick with it. Um, it's safe to me. That's not, you know, rewarding. That's not fun. I, I like to try new things, good or bad. I'll take them both um, and uh, just try to break new grounds a little bit. Um, otherwise, it becomes too much like work. <laughs>
I'm gonna kiss ass for some salmon. <laughs> I got lots, sweetheart. How's this one? How's this that is one? Good. Yeah, that's good. Will that work for that's you? That's a good one too. I, I actually like this one better. No. Oh Christ! What the? We got us a rock star, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, all good rides must come to an end. But huge thanks to Tom, Bonnie, and the guys at Hoxotic Custom Cycle, all the riders who joined me today, and the Call to Slave Club. Thank you for watching. Ride safe. And I'll see you next time on Biker TV. Biker TV is brought to you by the Bikers Reunion. Motorcycle Mojo Magazine. Casa Custom Homes. Oh